Hello, and welcome back to my programs dev stream, RP1, where we have tool tips now. Isn't that nice. Uh, and it turns out we're nearly at max rep for the current level subsidy. Science tool tip. See here, all the numbers are doubled. Can't afford to hire anybody. Okay, we can put a few more engineers into that. Uh, R and D. Expensive, but maybe not too expensive. But things are a bit changed. That'll give us a little more science, and we'll net get our next crop of applicants. Okay, as it happened, we were already overstaffed at eight, overstaffed at eighty, so just as well I had to pull those three off. Anyway, oh, yeah, yeah. also, um, we now have non trivial maintenance costs. I mean, they were already broadly non trivial before, but now they're very definitely non trivial. Interesting. Why is that the case? Forty four, because we have a hundred and ten engineers. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Why is R and D so costly? That's strange. I thought it was No, I guess that's right. So what do we have to do? Well, you know, Mr. Bond. Uh, squirrel, so it's offset by the fact that the R&D complex upgrades cost half as much as they used to. So they're, not, they're now only about increasing your researcher cap. And uh, because everything costs a little bit less than it used to, 
net, you can hire more researchers, but uh, the fact that staffs are double didn't change any of the rates. Like, my research rate is exactly what it used to be. Alright, let's roll that out, and I guess I'm gonna keep building these? Or, no, I guess I'll start modifying this launch complex. Hmm. No. I guess I'll keep building these, actually. Because there's no point in doing that until we do... We can do advanced bio here. Once we do that... Oh, I can't afford to duplicate it, even. I also can't afford to roll it out. I guess I can, because that cost is spread over a few days. Okay. Now I can duplicate it. And check science. Flying high, we want more of the water, I guess. Flying high, we get a little bit more of that. And lastly, planetary photography. Uh, we can get it from anywhere. So I'll go out over the water. Oh, I keep forgetting that I can just do it through autos. Duh. God. So dumb. Okay, we're lined up. And let's spin up a little bit. Hello. Sorry, uh, research, how much do you uh, 
I have left on that. Sorry, you broke up some. I heard how much do you have left on that? Uh, on the research. Uh, uh, I need. I need to get the. Um, need to get the first science node so I get the advanced biocapsule. Right. That one costs three, I think. Right. If I'm not misremembering. Is it one? Uh, I forget offhand. I know it's it's locked. I just finished the node that it's locked behind, so that's helpful. Yeah, that may be a problem if it takes. Uh, I mean, comparatively, a problem if it takes more science to get to it versus two to finish out downrange. Uh. Does it only? I guess if you build a large enough pad, you can do it with two. But we were we were adding those extra downrange contracts, so. I mean, I think you can go, do 4K downrange on a uh, on the 15 ton pad if you have two nodes of research. Yeah, well, maybe the answer is 5,000. Yeah, maybe the answer is 5,000 or or whatever whatever it requires to get a little yeah. bit more. Yep. Fine. Or forcing people to upgrade to, I don't know, 20 tons so that they can fully utilize a yeah. RD-101 or I don't know. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. I thought you already did film, though. Oh, I've, this is this is not based on any contract. This is just I'm keeping the LC occupied and giving myself science. Right. In particular, because giving myself this science will give me a bunch of applicants. So I'm near the near the discontinuity. Okay. So you finished all the optional film research contracts too? Uh, I couldn't do the last one because it uh, needs more downrange than I can get with this launch vehicle and I don't want to make a bigger launch vehicle. Okay. Like it's close, I probably only need a few hundred more meters per second, but um, I don't think it's worth it. Like, the little rep is not meaningful given that I'm basically at the cap already. Okay. And if I ask what year you're in? Uh, 53. May 20th, 1953. Yeah. yeah, I got a bunch of rep from the early records before we fixed them. That's cool. But I also lost out on some rep from experiment rocket planes because I forgot that they, once they were no longer required, they had cooldowns. Right. So I felt pretty dumb. Yeah, I expected that um, just like with RP1, we're going to be monkeying with rep rewards for a long time in the future. Oh, come on. Just adding a timing puzzle for a <laughs> timing game. Quick time event.
Why is it not popping up? The I know I've done this correctly. I'll do it this way. Why didn't somehow magically break that button? Yeah, hope not. No, Mr. Bond, it, uh... It will be a very long time, if ever, before KSB2 will be ready for us to RP1 in it. Yeah. I mean, I guess now that I have Harmony, I can try to fix the bounciness in the water, but I don't know. Not sure how to do that, really. I mean, what it really needs is rewriting part buoyancy so that it can properly be doubles based. Although that'll uh, also probably need to be written in Scatterer, because Scatterer already, I think, does some stuff. The local sea level. All I right. wonder if that's that gave us. Sorry? Uh, I remember CMAV working on um, water drag or something like that when he uh, had planes crashing into the water or something like that or water landings for that. Oh, that might have. That's plausible. I don't. I don't recall that at all. I know he put it. He put in the uh, running part buoyancy only when needed, and that was a big performance optimization. Okay. Um, but I, I don't remember, remember anything about. Trend. I don't remember the drag part. All right, we have. 10 new applicants. Uh, pretty sure they should all be researchers. Squirrel, he had the he had the recover button coming up once in a while, so it was it clearly he was trying to click on it in the right yeah. time. So. Yeah, I think the issue is that by the time the issue is if the frequency is high enough, it takes longer for that thing to unfurl than the time you're actually in the water. Like yeah. it starts to unfurl and then you're out of the water so clicking on the thing doesn't do you any good. Uh, oh, I should make a mod where you can declare your intent to recover and then it will recover as soon as you're allowed to. Yep, that would be useful. Okay, so you could also just add hysteresis to that uh, drop down. Uh, except that doesn't do you any good, though. Well, I guess it sort of does, but there's how else will you know when it's safe to click the button? Because if there's hysteresis in it, it'll stay down even when it's no longer should be down. Yeah, but if, if it's down and the, I don't know, the craft flew up in the air 0.5 seconds ago, is it really that bad if you abort, if you recover then? Uh, what I'm saying is that KCT will, um, KSP will not let you recover then. Oh, okay. So the, the, the dialogue is not de determinative. Right. The dialogue comes down when it when you're able to recover, and it goes up when you're no longer able to recover. So if you change when it goes down and comes up, that does nothing with the underlying condition. Are you 100% sure on that? Because that thing comes down, you click the button, and a dialogue pops up deciding whether you want to re recover to the hangar or to the, you know, like, full yes. recover. And it does not seem to matter if your craft is no longer capable of being recovered once that dialogue I have, is up. I have had that clicking normal recovery fail. When, oh, okay. Yeah. Pretty sure I've had that. Yeah, I swear that I've had that fail. That's um, where I've had it seem like it should fail, but still be able to recover. Possible. I may just be misremembering. Like, I remember things like, I don't know, the, the having a craft that starts sliding or something after that dialogue is up and still being able to recover. Um, I'm going to make them all researchers. Oops. Okay.
Okay, so I need almost 20 signs for the next applicants. Thinking about doing a thing where uh, it's more granular, so you get one person every little bit of science instead of those big steps. Not sure whether that's good. Like it feels nice to get a, like it feels nice to have a science goal, and then when you reach it, it uh, get a bundle. But depends on the frequency. I mean, I think it it's nice, very nice in the early game to get you know like some something when you get you know five sudden science science, but it's relatively meaningless later on and you don't really want to encourage somebody to constantly be checking that dialogue I can pour in a little bit more sand a little bit more yeah that's true so I mean ultimately it'd be nice if it was on a some sort of log scale where it was like okay after you've gotten your first few rewards then it ticks up how much it requires per interval not that it's changing how much you get per uh, that's interval. already true though hmm? uh Oh, interesting. Tooltips don't work in this scene. That's weird. Um, Is that new? There used to be 20 science was the point. Regardless. Yeah, no, I, I rewrote that a long, long time ago for LCs when we changed it to giving you personnel. Right, okay. Yeah, now it's uh, the brakes are the three quarter power. We talked about, we literally talked about this on a call um, because we went over the the spreadsheet data for, I think. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's uh, it's the three quarter power, which is why those breakpoints are um, uh, are not whole numbers. But yeah, so you get your first pastel at. Uh, one science yeah, at uh what is it? It's I think eight point something science and your next one at somewhere around twenty and so forth. Okay, I don't remember talking about this, but you may have told me about it and I thought you were referring to something else. Oh. So okay. I do remember you mentioning three quarter powers and one point five powers an awful lot for all kinds of formulas. Yes. It just turns out it really does powers. work pretty well for a bunch of formulas. Uh, this only gives me better avionics, which I'm not going to get. And this is a... Uh, how do I know how much it costs? Apparently I can't tell because I've already researched it. Oh well. Alright. Let's look over here. That unlocks in 136 days. Then we will finally be able to do advanced bio and start our orbital program. I used to think power curves, you know, like solved a lot of tuning problems, but I've I've gradually moved away from them to using things like float curves for a lot of stuff, even if they're mimicking power curves because yeah, it's much it generates more human readable or human tractable data yep both for a designer and for a for a player yeah okay it looks like we already have somebody trained to fly this mission that's cool Although there have definitely been times that I've just taken a power curve, spread it into a spreadsheet, and then started entering into a float curve. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's take the first one of these, 50 kilometers. So we'll definitely be able to do 50 kilometers. A bunch of rep. Yeah, 600 kilometers. We're not we can't do that, and I don't really want to. Like I'm already at max burn time. I don't really want to overburn that thing. Okay, our rep is max rep has gone up a bit. So cool. All 
Let us fly the suborbital mission. Oh, I'm a doofus. I could have... I forgot that I had this thing ready to go on the last supersonic flight. Well, we'll do it right afterwards. No worries. Yeah, so Clifford will fly that one. Cool, cool. Uh... I wonder if still people still get named Clifford. Yeah, I had a classmate named Clifford. Or a dog nowadays. Uh, I had a classmate named Clifford. Uh, it's actually sort of freaky seeing that because his last name was also reasonably similar. to Cox, so... Yeah, I keep misreading that as <laughs> the other Clifford. Uh, we'll, we'll try 400. I th I don't know. Let's guess. Here we go. Okay, cruise flight, 150, vertical speed, 20. Craft settings, min. Wait a minute. Yeah. We're, I got my, yeah, I did this wrong. Well, our engine didn't fail, so it's okay. Let's try AOA hold. New toys. Uh, let's try five degrees. Steady climb. Hey, Pep. Always a pleasure to see you. Hey, Pep. I, mean, I guess five degrees is a bit much. Yeah, yeah, it got too slow. Okay. Now it's coming back up. Let's try four degrees. And five degrees.
How you doing tonight? Like Pap? It's new. I just asked how you're doing. Okay, we're gonna start our run. Nope, and I kind of gave up on it for a bit. Just got frustrated with it. Realized I was okay with reading books for a while while I was uh ugh, getting my next job lined up. Well, I might have one tomorrow, so we'll see. Cool. Uh, computer or job? Sorry. Job. Oh, sweet. Yeah, then I got a message back from um, Proxy.ai. It's uh, ah. Bright and Lauren Ellis's AI thingamabob. Yeah. All right. I think it's about time for us to do our climb out usually don't schedule a new meeting if they're just trying to tell you that you're going, that they're not interested, so I'm assuming this is a job offer. But who knows? crossed folks and you probably didn't get enough time to up uh, enough speed and lower altitudes and how much time you've got on the engine left but uh yeah I have like a minute 30 yeah I'm sure it's still gonna be fine given that the altitude requirement was so low yeah you're right it would have been more optimal the other way around God, all that time the Mach 2 flight experiment was stopped. That sucks. Oh, yeah, that definitely sucks. Well, you get a bunch on, on when you go back down. Yeah, although it, I didn't hit Mach 2 that long before I started my ascent. So. Yeah, you definitely started your ascent too early then. <laughs> Yeah, all right, so with something more optimal, we could probably hit 70 kilometers, which is fine. That makes sense, given what I would expect out of this plane. Yeah. Oh, look at how close that is. 69.6 .6 kilometers. I saw you mention that, by the way, in Dev Talk. Um, yeah, can't really blame me for that. That's all of it. That's all engineering. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if there's a specific reason they did it that way. Presumably there is. Uh, I mean, X was not really built to, to do robotics the way we'd like, especially um, on top of the. I don't think it's. I don't think it's that they meant to do it that way. I think it's just they didn't correct for scale when they were doing reparenting or something. Yes. So that's no, that I, should, I, that's probably harmoniable. Like I said, I didn't know if it if it was you know like to deal with some edge case that they found, but it could be just an issue mistake. I don't know why they would have set up scaling to work differently on robotics parts though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's that they meant to do it that way. I think it's probably just that they because they weren't 
playing with parts that had non 1.0 rescale factors, they didn't realize that they needed to do some extra to make that work. Mm -hmm. The DLC really should have had more time to cook. Yeah. There's things I miss about working on Kerbal. That is not one of them. And it was so much better when you were around, too. Sorry, what? What do you mean? Uh, the things not having enough time and being kind of crunchy. Yeah. Oh, I bet the part you're saying about me not being around, I was like, but we never worked no, together. No, no, my point was that things were, by the time you were around, things were better. <laughs> like, uh, in the bad old days, they were really bad. I think things were organized a little bit better, but it did seem like it was, the ask was very high to develop that DLC with the same amount of people, while we were also trying to still do version updates. Yeah. In the time frame we did that DLC in. Yep. Okay, so I clearly didn't have enough downrange distance to start. But uh, it's better to have too little than too much. Very true. Especially if you have good air brakes. Yes. Which I do. to land. We did at least pretty consistently hit our dates on KSP, but that was partially due to Jamie and Dave being really good and partially just due to like building a lot of scoping into all the designs. Yeah. Yeah, that's always a challenge. But yeah, they're, they're real solid folks. Last minute alignment.
Man, sync rate under a meter per second. That was pretty slick. And ended much better than it started, <laughs> given the craziness I was doing to line up. got some science. 65 days. Like it. Okay, and the recovery is only 15 days for that thing. All right. Okay, we're going to get that in 80 days. But meanwhile, I am pretty sleepy, so I think we're going to call it there. Hey, Thanks for coming night. by. Good night. And thank you for everyone watching. I will catch you next time. Night.